My fellow prophecy student, greetings. I've been hearing about impending rapture from I was a child. Knowing nothing about the Bible then, I was led to believe that this is what the second advent is about, until I became an adult and began to take more than a passing interest in the Bible. Actually, it was an informal Bible discussion on Revelation 13 that drove me to dust my Bible off. Without studying the details of whether or not the rapture teaching is valid, I often wondered what it is about this doctrine, why so many Christians believe it. This has become so much of a concern to me because from my casual reading of the scriptures, I just did not get that idea. I believe that most Christians who hold this view are doing so sincerely and are truly looking forward to be caught up to heaven before the great tribulation occurs. As one Christian young lady said to me, I am not concerned about the coming mark of the beast crisis because I won't be here when it happens. And she is not the only person I heard with this kind of comment. But when I consider what this teaching entails, it does not surprise me to hear remarks like these. It seems like there is a deep-seated desire for an escape from the adversities that the inhabitants of the earth will be faced with in the latter days. This situation illustrates the fact that we don't rule our beliefs, our beliefs rule us. Whatever opinion we hold, we are going to do what it takes to preserve its consistency. A belief is essentially an acceptance of corollary beliefs with which it is consistent. For instance, if you believe in an ever-burning hell, you will have to find a way to make it consistent by accepting the idea that man's soul is immortal because that's the only way they are going to be able to experience eternal torment. In my personal study of the book of Revelation in connection with other prophecies, I have identified five counts on which I believe the rapture theory needs to be re-examined. They are as follows. Count number one. It is inconsistent with the Bible teaching concerning the redemption of the saints. The Apostle Paul's teaching on the culmination of end time events points us to a single event, the blessed hope of the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This particular event represents the hope of every Christian. According to this apostle, the saints will be redeemed when Christ descends from heaven with a shout, 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-17. He does not represent it as an occurrence of which the world will be unaware, or as an event that will be followed or preceded by any other event that speaks to the redemption of the saints. Count number two. It conveys confused messages. I am unclear as to whether I am to prepare to meet Christ at his coming or for an event that precedes it. If the secret rapture is to be taken as synonymous to the second coming, then that will be contrary to the scriptures, which declares that Christ at his coming will be seen by all. Revelation 1 and verse 7. And if they are not the same, then one would have to decide whether to preach about the secret rapture and forget about the second coming, or preach about the second coming and expose his hearers to the risk of missing out on the rapture. This concern comes to the fore because of a conversation I had with a Pentecostal lady. She seems to be one of the more zealous advocates of the rapture. In her defense of this teaching, I notice she keeps quoting 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17, which clearly has nothing whatsoever to do with the secret ascension of the saints. If I were an advocate of this doctrine, I don't see how I could quote a text like this and offer it as proof to strengthen my position. Count number three. It contradicts the biblical forecast concerning the persecution of the saints during the tribulation. According to the rapture position, the saints would have been caught up before then, while those who face the tribulation period are the ones who are supposedly left behind. But according to end time prophecy, the Christians are the ones who are said to be victorious over the beast and his image, including those who are beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for their refusal to take the mark of the beast and worship his image. In order for the Bible to speak thus of them, it must be because they went through the great tribulation. In fact, it is none other than the Apostle Paul who admonishes us that we must look forward to the time of the coming of the man of sin before Christ's second coming. And when we consider the fact that the man of sin is the one who will precipitate the tribulation, we have every reason to believe that even the Apostle himself 
was looking forward to that event as a necessary antecedent to the second advent. Count number four. It has the potential to keep people in a state of unpreparedness for what is to come in the future. When you are told that the saints will be caught up in a secret rapture before the mark of the beast crisis, you will have no reason to brace yourself for an impending firestorm. It is like hearing a weather report that a hurricane is coming. But your pastor come and say, don't worry, the Lord will spirit us to another location just before it arrives. And because you believe your pastor, you make no preparation for the impending disaster. What do you think would happen if your pastor is mistaken? Now consider what would happen if the rapture teaching turns out to be wrong. Count number five. In all my study of end time events, I am still unable to differentiate between the tribulation saints and the raptured saints. There is only one designation of the people of God in the book of Revelation. They are simply described as the saints with no differentiation or dichotomy between them. Therefore, descriptions such as raptured saints and tribulation saints are of human invention and have nothing to do with what is represented in the scriptures. I have done a great deal of research on this subject because I believe that this doctrine of the rapture has the potential to become a major if not fatal hindrance to many Christians in the last days. In your study of Revelation 1 and verse 7, chapter 19, 11 to 21, Isaiah 25 and verse 9, and Titus 2 and verse 13, you will see clearly that far from the expectation of a mysterious episode, the hope of the early Christians is in relation to a single event, the glorious expectation of meeting Christ at his coming. The hope of being snatched away in a rapture appears so strange in light of the whole biblical scheme of end time issues that I could not with all sincerity undertake its advocacy. I have prepared an advanced downloadable prophecy study program on Revelation 13 that covers the rapture theory among many other end time issues. For a more analytical and comprehensive presentation on the rapture debate, click on the link in the video or the link below and download the entire End Time Prophecy eCourse package. It is www.prophecyecourse.com. I trust you have been better enlightened concerning this subject. Thanks for watching.